Hi, and welcome to the new Farm Virtual Learning Series. My name is Heidi Warner, and I'm the Eastern U.S. Ornamental Account Manager for New Farm, as well as the Greenhouse Nursery Segment Lead. Today, we're going to talk about chrysanthemum production and its common issues. Let's first look at some fun facts about chrysanthemums. Chrysanthemums have been around for a long time. They were originally cultivated in Asia and were first recorded in writing in the 15th century BC. That's over 3,000 years ago. Chrysanthemums entered American horticulture in 1798 when John Stevens imported a cultivated variety known as dark purple from England. In some parts of the world, including most parts of the United States, chrysanthemums are associated with joy and optimism and happiness. But in other parts of the world, Chrysanthemums are related to death and are known as the funeral flower. The chrysanthemum flower is one of the most popular flowers in the world, next only to rose. And there are 40 wild species of chrysanthemum and thousands of varieties created via selective breeding. Some cultural tips about chrysanthemums, chrysanthemums like full sun and fertile soil. They're heavy feeders so practice a good fertilization program using water soluble or slow release options, and in some cases, a combination of both. And remember to always have your soil tested and your water tested before starting a new crop. When choosing a growing mix, a lighter well-drained media is preferred. A heavy media may delay rooting, reducing the quality of the finished crop. Avoid mixes that are too light and may dry out too rapidly. And the media starting pH in a soilless mix should be around 5.8 to 6.4. A soil-based mix should be around 6.0 to 6.5. Growing media with high soluble salts can cause root burn and make plants more susceptible to attack. Mums need regular watering because of their very shallow root systems. Drought will cause woody, stunted growth. And overwatering, on the other hand, can cause yellowing leaves that blacken and drop, as well as making the plant prone to disease. So let's talk first about some common disease pressures that are prominent in mum production. First would be Pythium. So we know that Pythium and Fusarium are both common uh, disease pressures and pathogens that are likely to emerge under moist conditions. So if we have frequent rain, overwatering of the crop, these can spur infections by, by Pythium. Water molds produce swimming spores that move in freestanding water that may puddle underneath the pots. Pythium infects at the tip of the roots and then colonizes the root system, causing root, root damage and loss. Affected plants will appear to be pale green and show signs of wilt during the warm times of the day, generally recovering in the evening. As the deep disease progress, plants become stunted and fail to recover. So what can we do to control this, this issue? What can we use to control Pythium? Some of the control products from New Farm include our Adorn fungicide and our Fostrol fungicide. You also wanna make sure that you monitor the moisture and water only as needed. Fusarium. Fusarium occurs more frequently when plants are stressed. So attention to proper growing practices and environmental conditions are important. The pathogen often invades one side of the vascular system, resulting in a one-sided wilt. The collapse or destruction of these water and nutrient transportation systems can result in the starvation of the upper part of the plant. Foliage will appear lighter in color and wilt from the bottom up. If fusarium has been a problem, increase the pH of your soil to a 6.5 to 7.0. Again, you want to monitor the moisture, water only as needed, and then products that will control fusarium include our 3336, 2636, Spirado, and Torque. Rhizoctonia. Rhizoctonia is a fungus that does not produce spores, but moves via the growth of thread-like masses called mycelia. Initial infection begins at the growing media surface and is responsible for crown rot. Rhizoc will present reddish brown dead areas at the soil line and eventually girdle the plant. Prevention and treatment of rhizoc can include a 
Firm, Sperato, Torque, 3336, 2636, Spectra 90, and Turney. Leaf spots. There are several different um, kinds of fungi that cause leaf spots. So here we have a list of various ones. Symptoms consist of spots on the leaves. The spots are at first yellowish and then become dark brown and black, increasing from an eighth of an inch to an inch in, or more in diameter. Leaves may wither prematurely and the lower leaves are infected first. With a hand lens, sometimes you can see white masses of spores uh, on the leaf spots. Your prevention and treatment, you wanna use a preventative spray program or if disease is severe enough to warrant chemical control, fungicides containing polyoxin D, such as our Affirm, Chlorothalonil, or Spectro 90, Mancozeb, which is our Protect DF, Thionate Methyl, which is our 3336, or 2636, or Spectro 90, Propiconazole, which is our Strider, or Myclobutanol, no, uh, can be used. Bacterial leaf spot is also a possible uh, disease and that can uh, be controlled using copper, which is our champion. Rust. This disease is caused by a fungus and the rust infection causes pale areas to appear in upper leaf surfaces with powdery orange pustules or spots directly beneath on the underside of the leaf. Severely infected plants are much weakened and fail to bloom properly. You want to be sure to remove infected leaves as soon as possible, set new plants farther apart, and provide better ventilation. Water the soil without wetting the plants. If disease is severe warrant to warrant chemical control, products such as Protect DF, Torque, 3336, 2636, or Spectro 90 can be used, as well as our Turney. Powdery mildew. This disease is caused by a fungus. The leaves are covered with a whitish, ash gray, powdery growth. The spores require a very moist atmosphere in which to germinate and spread the infection. There are lots of controls for powdery mildew. Um, you wanna, if it's very severe, you wanna remove the disease plant material from the greenhouse or growing area. You can use products um, such as polyoxin D, which is our firm. Also, other products that are labeled and do a good job for powdery mildew include our Turney, Strider, 3336, and you want to use these products according to their label. Gray mild or botrytis is a common disease issue that we see in, uh, in greenhouse and nursery production. The leaves show brown water soaked spots. Infected parts become covered with a grayish brown powdery mass of spores. The disease may sometimes be confused with ray blight disease, which we'll talk about later. For control of uh, gray mold or botrytis, you want to space the plants for free circulation of the air. And you can apply foliar sprays such as a firm, Spectra 90, 3336, 2636, Protect DF, or Sperato. Now we mentioned ray blight. Ray blight is a disease that's also caused by a fungus. The ray flowers or marginal flowers of the inflorescence are attacked so that the blooms are deformed and one-sided. Early infection may cause blasting of the buds. Products that will take care of ray blight include Spectra 90, Protect DF, 3336, Strider, and others. Bacterial blight, um, or Winnia, the most pronounced symptom is a rot of the upper part of the stem, resulting in wilt and collapse of the uh, distal portion of the plant. Infected cuttings may show a brown to black decay at their bases. Occasionally, the only symptom is a marginal leaf scorch. You want to be sure to use uh, cuttings that are disease-free or dip the cuttings for four hours in solutions of antibiotics such as streptomycin when you receive them. Spray with products containing Mancozeb, which is our Protect DF, or Copper, which is our Cuproxit or Champion. Viruses. There are many different uh, common viruses that will attack chrysanthemums. 
including the mosaic virus, uh, chrysanthemum smut virus, tomato spotted wilt virus, astros yellows. Virus infected plants generally have spindly stunted shoots and yellowed foliage. The leaves may be marked with ring spots, lines, pale areas, or modeling. Infected plants are stunted, form dense rosettes, and have small flowers. Virus diseases are spread by sucking insects such as aphids and leaf hoppers many times, so you want to make sure that you control any insect and also be sure to control any weeds in the greenhouses that can be vectors. Um, so you see here that I mentioned uh, control and prevention is controlling the insects and controlling the weeds. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of, there are no sprays that will control a virus. So sanitation and keeping a clean environment is important. Wash tools used around the inf uh, infected plants so you don't spread the virus. We talked about disease pressures. So let's talk about some common insect pressures. So common insect pressures include thrips, aphids, lepidoptera. Those are common insect pressures. Um, but we also see mites, leaf miner, and whitefly that can be a nuisance on uh, chrysanthemums. We're all familiar with aphid. The chrysanthemum aphids are brown to black, which other species range in color from green to pink. We all know that aphids feed them by piercing the plant tissue and sucking the plant sap. They prefer feeding on the new growth of the plant and uh, will get into the shoots, underside of the leaves, buds, and flowers. Their feeding can result in distorted growth, stunning, and sometimes the death of the entire plant. As they feed on the plant sap, they excrete honeydew, which then that honeydew can result in sooty mold. Also, aphids are great vectors and transmit various plant viruses. So it's important to control aphids if they are, if they are present. What are the controls? As a result of their adapt uh, ability to reproduce, aphids are very difficult to control. Leaving one aphid alive can result in the production of a new colony very quickly. If natural predators do not keep aphids under control and serious damage is resulting, then you want, to provo uh, you want to provide a spray program with insecticides such as Tristar, Mallet, Safari, and Tame. Mites. Two-spotted spider mites and other mite species are pests of chrysanthemums. Mites are not insects, but are more closely related to spiders. They tend to be a problem during hot, dry periods. Because mites are extremely small, sometimes they don't get caught early enough, and you don't see them until there is webbing on the plant, which means you have a severe case of mites. So um, generally, light infestations, you'll start to see some stippling, yellow spots, uh, or the, the leaf may appear to be dusty. Um, you want to catch mites early because once the, the infestations get heavier, um, you'll start to see those distorted leaves, withered, discolored blooms, um, and then that webbing that we talked about. It can affect the buds, the stems, and the underside of the leaves. You want to make sure that you use a, a spray program that has different modes of action. Um, you would, if you have a mite infestation that's bad, please be sure to destroy severely infected plants or portions of the plants as the spider mites are hard to control in these situations um, or circumstances. If caught early enough, insecticidal soap can be used and uh, if not caught early enough, stronger miticides may be necessary, such as products like Tetrasan, Minx2, and Engulf GHM. These applica applications or rotation of these products is going to be able to allow you to get all life stages of the mite as well as all types of mites. So you're going to get those two spotted mites, you're going to get the um, broad mites, Cyclamen Lewis uh, mites, all types of mites and as I mentioned, all life stages. Because the engulf's gonna get the eggs, juveniles, and adults. The tetrasan is gonna sterilize the adult, but kill the eggs and juveniles. And then the minx too is gonna kill the adult. So if you have a plant material that's ready to go to market soon, you may wanna tank mix tetrasan and minx too, because even though we sterilize the adult the, with the tetrasan, the minx too is gonna kill that adult. So it's not running around when it gets to your customer. Um, this will give you a six-week program. At the end of the six-week program, you could start over with those products or you could throw in another mode of action such as TAME. 
Chrysanthemum leaf miner is the larva of a small dark colored fly. The adult female lays eggs on the undersurfaces of the leaves. The larva then hatch and penetrate the surface to enter the leaf and live between the upper and lower surfaces of the leaves. As they move through the leaf feeding, they create winding trails that are generally pale green to brown in color. Dots of black waste products are visible in some of the trails. Severely infested leaves may dry up and droop downward along the stem. Be sure to remove and destroy any plant remains in the fall, and if damage is severe, spray with a foliar uh, insecticide containing or use uh, products such as Safari, Tristar, Mallet, and IGR, such as Distance in your rotation. Lepidoptera, caterpillars can be a problem inside and outside production areas. Um, they're attracted to night photoperiodic photoperi lighting. The adult moths migrate into the production area and lay the eggs uh, within the plant camp canopy. And then after hatching, the larvae begin consuming the plant part parts. Um, so it's easier to control Lepidoptera when they're younger um, instead of in their third and fourth life stage. So, so you want to start early and, and scout and monitor for these pests. Um, an excellent product that can be used and is OMRI certified is your BT, which is our Dipel Pro. And then there are other sprays that can be used, which include Tame, TriStar. Uh, and if you're growing your mums indoors, you can also use Overture. Overture is not labeled for outdoor production, but it is listed for indoor production. Many of you are familiar with Overture because it is an excellent thrip control, but it also has Lepidoptera on the label. White flies are common in, in greenhouse and in nursery production. Um, we do know that the white fly are difficult to control because they're hard to detect. Um, they can congregate on the underside of the leaves. Adult white flies can be detected on sticky cards. That's a good way to monitor for their presence. Um, and then also when the plant is disturbed, the white fly will fly and you'll be able to see them. In their immature stages, they are small scale like insects and can be found feeding on the underside of the leaves. White fly are usually not major pests of mums unless other crops such as tomatoes or cotton is grown nearby. Um, spray with an insecticide listing white fly on the label. Products such as Tristar, Mallet, Safari, Tame, Minx2, and Distance IGR are all good products that will control white fly. Some of those, again, can be used as a spray uh, or as a drench. We do have our production guide that's available. Um, this will map out the, the individual weeks or uh, months of the calendar. It'll give you various uh, common uh, disease pressures that are prominent at that time, as well as insect pressures and products that you could rotate or suggested spray program for various weeks of your mum production. Thank you for your time today. Thank you also for your consideration and use of New Farm products. If you have any questions on this crop or any other crop, please feel free to reach out to your New Farm rep. Also, please take time to check out our website at newfarm.com forward slash US turf, where you'll find our labels, our product bulletins, spray schedules, and lots of other resources such as other virtual training sessions. If you have any questions again, please feel free to reach out to us and thank you for your use and consideration of New Farm.